Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will be talking about how you can configure proxy chains to work in combination with Tor in order to anonymize traffic, not only web browsing traffic but rather instead all network related traffic generated by pretty much all of your applications. Now there are there are a few of those which will not work in combination with proxy chains, namely one such application is uh, or piece of software is Metasploit. Now Metasploit is practically a hacking framework and it is of crucial importance for, for pretty much any sort of hacking activity in today's world, especially because it allows automated generation of code needed to break a certain system and it also contains a list of vulnerabilities as well. However, what I want to do here today is show you how you can anonymize pretty much all footprinting traffic or nmap or traffic generated by nmap when you're gathering information or even your web browsing traffic in a different fashion other than using a Tor browser and how you can cover your tracks in general no matter what you are doing pretty much. So. One of the first things uh, that you do need to do, uh, in Kali Linux it's, it comes pre-installed, so you need Tor and proxy chains. Uh, these two things you would install on some, on some other systems, Linux systems or Windows systems, doesn't matter. Uh, Tor is kind of tricky, I, I have seen versions where Tor is not installed by default, and I have specified in the previous tutorial I do believe how to install Tor, no problems, but uh, yeah what you would need to do here is simply configure and not install anything. So let's just navigate over to the Etsy proxy chains configuration file nano slash ets, uh, Etsy proxy chains dot conf, dot conf press enter and there we go we are in the configuration file let me just zoom let me just expand this actually and what proxy chains is well, it's an abil it gives you an ability to route your traffic through a series of proxy servers and stay anonymous in such a fashion by hiding behind them or by having them forward your requests so that it looks to the other side that your requests are coming from them as opposed to as opposed from you. Uh, surprisingly enough, there are a large amount of free proxy servers out there that you can use, but they're not very stable, you know, they go up and down and they're not very fast. So for specific targets, they can be useful, not for brute forcing, not for any form of brute forcing attacks. But if you are doing something to a certain target, if you're trying to log in or you're already logged in, you can definitely do it through proxy chains and it will be reasonably fast and reasonably stable as well. But if you're doing some sort of mass scanning or you're brute forcing a password or something of a kind, proxy chains uh, with a list of proxies selected from the internet, free proxies, that is, uh, that's not going to work out. Uh, it, it, I mean it's gonna work out eventually in a technical sense but it will consume more time than you can spare and by more time than I than you can spare I mean like a month or two to do to do a simple scan so that's not an option there there are other ways of doing that uh, but for the time being I just want to show you how you can use proxy chains, how you can configure it actually, because it's it's really useful. I use it fairly often, a lot of people do, and it's a fantastic piece of software. So first off, you have types of proxies here which you can use. You have HTTP, SOX4, and SOX5. Now there are fundamental differences between these protocols. Uh, you always, always want to find yourselves a SOX5 proxy as that is the best possible one that has the ability to anonymize all sorts of traffic. HTTP, well as the name itself self says, it's for HTTP traffic and SOX4 is very similar to SOX5 but it does not support IPv6 protocol and it does not support UDP protocol so this can be, the SOX, SOX4 can be rather problematic. You always want to make sure that you're using SOX5 wherever and however. Anyway, down below you have these options which we will go over. So basically 
how you enable these options. You don't need to type in some complex lines of code or anything of a kind. Basically, just uh, delete the hash, and that's it. Save the file. The option is enabled. Ha this hash presents a commented outline, means meaning that the, that the system reading this file will ignore it if there is a hash. If there isn't a hash, it will take it into consideration and interpret it accordingly. Anyway, what we have here are, uh, are statements which allow us to specify how we want our traffic to be routed. So first off, we have dynamic chain. Dynamic chain is some is an option which you will find people using the most. It is most commonly used option, a preferable one, and honestly, I think it's the best one, primarily because it's the most stable one. And here's why. Suppose you have A, B, C, D proxies. So those are some servers with IP addresses with open ports. And if you have a strict chain policy like we have here, you will only be able to access any site in the on the internet in general uh, by going through A, B, C, D. So you have to go through all of them and you have to go through in that specific order, A, B, C, D. And that's not always a good thing. I mean, if you're paying for five proxies, that's not a problem because they will always be operational. They will always be up and why not? That's, a, that's not a bad option there at all. However, most people use free proxies and they don't tend to pay for them. Why would you pay for five, ten proxies uh, for a simple scan or something of a kind? Uh, they're not free. They cost money. They're not that expensive either. But still, I mean, uh, the act of paying itself identifies you and it kind of diminishes the amount of anonymity you have on the net. There are some complex payment methods which you can use to anonymize yourself, but still. It's far simpler to simply go ahead and use dynamic proxy chain, dynamic chains. So without, for, I'm just going to go ahead and uncomment, oops, and I'm going to uncomment this line. Go ahead down below and comment this line and comment this line out. So strict chains will no longer be used. I will be using dynamic chains. One more thing to note here is that if you are using, if you want to use proxy chains in combination with Tor, so if you want to route all of your traffic through the Tor network, not just the web traffic, uh, you do, you must enable dynamic chains. I mean, there is a chance that it will work with strict chains, but due to the instability of Tor nodes, uh, it is highly unlikely you will need dynamic chains and that is why I am using them today. Anyway, uh, if you are using dynamic chains, it just gives you the ability to go from A, B, C, D to your desired destination by not having to adhere to any order. So let's say that C is down, you would go A, B, D and it would work no problems. Even if B was down, you would go A, D and you would still reach the destination. So as long as one single proxy is functional, it's going to work and you don't require any specific order to it. Down below, you have a random chain. Now, random chains are, in effect, uh, basically the same thing as resetting your services. I mean, if you're resetting your Tor, you will be assigned a new IP address. I mean, Tor assigns you a new IP address every 10 minutes or so anyway. But the random ch with the random chain, you can specify a list of IPs, and then you can tell your computer, "Okay, I want you to try. I want you to connect to this point, and every time you connect, every time you transmit a packet, I want you to use a different proxy. You can do that as well. That's one of the options. Definitely, you can say, "Okay, use." go 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 use this one five times and then change it to another one or something of a kind you, there are a lot of options to specify there uh, primarily the chain length anyway down if we go ahead down below there's the quiet mode you don't really need that proxy DNS requests uh, no leak from DNS data this is very important you cannot have any DNS leaks uh, let me explain to you what DNS leaks are. Even though somebody cannot get your particular IP address, they can get the IP address of the DNS server that you are using. 
what DNS servers do is resolve domain, domains to IP addresses and vice versa. So for example, if you typed in, I don't know, uh, youtube.com, the DNS server of your local ISP provider will resolve that into some sort of an IP address that the YouTube has and it will make a request, no problems. You do not want that happening because your local DNS server will be discovered and that information can be used in order to figure out your personal IP address and then when that is done your physical location is pretty much compromised. So that's, that's a no-go. You definitely need proxy DNS here. It might slow you down a bit, but without it, you're practically not anonymous. It's just a matter of time before somebody finds you. If you go down below, oops, we have some other options here, but we're not really interested in them at the moment. Uh, what we got here are formats for entering proxies. And I'm going to leave it at that, and then we'll explain the rest in the follow-up tutorial. But just a keynote before, we, before, you, before you go into the next tutorial, have a look at these. You don't need to go on the net or read anything about it. Just have a look at the format here, how, how they are written. This is an example of proxy chains and how you can write them down. And... And not, not a bad idea would be to figure out what these last things are here. So you have a type of proxy, you have an IP address, figure out what this number is, what this name is, and what this word here is. I will of course explain all of this in the next tutorial, but just try to just try to figure it out on your own and then you'll get the answers. It's pretty simple. In any case, I bid you farewell and I'll see you in the next tutorial.